Hello and welcome. This is the second part of our series in Chicken Keeping for Beginners. In part one we talked about space and housing and this time we're going to be looking at coop care and chicken poop. So join me. Hello, my name's Fiona. In part one, we talked about space and we talked about housing. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about coop care. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the various types of bedding that you could put into your coops with your hens. I'm gonna show you what a coop looks like first thing in the morning after your hens have been in there. And I'm gonna show you how I clean it and what I then do with any poop that I've taken from the coop. I'm going to be using that phrase quite a lot in this set of filming. The last thing we're going to talk about is actually collecting the poop from the field, the enclosure that we have itself. And then I'm going to show you what we do with it because we do make use of it here and you may be able to do the same. So join me and let's get started. Let's start with bedding. I'd like to talk about the three most common bedding materials. The one that I won't be covering is hay. Now the reason for that is that hay is essentially dried grass and that means that your chickens will probably try and eat it. Long strands of grass can actually get tangled in the crop which could cause problems for your chickens so it's not one that I would recommend. Your cheapest option is straw and this is widely used by lots and lots of chicken keepers. The downside is that you end up using quite a lot of it. If you think about it this is a strand of straw in the bedding. If your chicken poos in the bedding they're going to poo on multiple different strands which means that you end up pulling out huge swathes just to get one little bit of pile of poop. You can get round that by buying this stuff which is chopped straw. But we found that for roughly the same price, we can get this, which is equestrian bedding and it's dust extracted wood shavings. It's great stuff. It comes in a giant bale, which is vacuum packed. And we pay um, in the UK here about seven pound a bale for this. And it lasts such a long time because when you pick out a pile of poo, you're only pulling out a small amount of bedding each time to leave clean bedding around it. The only thing I would say is if you go down this route, make sure it is wood shavings and not wood chip. Wood chip can harbour various forms of fungi and that fungi can cause problems for your chickens. So it does need to be proper equestrian bedding, dust extracted wood shavings. We love it and it's what we've chosen to go with. My first job every single day, even before the coffee, is to poo pick the chicken coops. And this is a coop that's been used by seven chickens overnight. Now the auto openers have let the chickens out at daybreak, so they've not been kept in here and still there's lots and lots of feces that need to be removed. So I'm going to get on with that now. I have my two trusty tools in place. I have a trug and that's self-explanatory. The feces and the soil bedding goes in there. And I also have this, which is a mucking out fork. Now it's actually a child's horse mucking out fork and it's from a company called Finalite. When it first arrived it had a huge long handle on it and we've clearly cut it down so we can easily get into the coop. Now when I was a child I used to help out the local stables and I learned to muck out and to poo pick in the mornings and what we do there is use one of these forks and you put it into the bedding and the idea is you then shake the bedding and any faeces and soiled bedding stuck to the faeces stay on the fork and good bedding falls through so it's far less wasteful than just picking soiled bedding out of the coop. By using wood shavings it's less wasteful again. If we use straw we would be taking out huge great big clumps using this fork but with shavings there's 
a lot less wastage so I'm moving far less every single day but I'm still getting out anything which can cause harm to the chickens. So there you have it, a beautifully clean coop. Doing it this way I think has a number of advantages. The first is that we use a lot less bedding, so it's more economic. And the second is that we don't need a massive scrub down on such a regular basis. I know people that don't clean during the week and they just do a big clean out once a week or once a fortnight, scrubbing the coops down and clearing all the bedding out. I don't necessarily need to do that unless we're heights of the summer months and the bedding needs topped up on a more regular basis. I tend to only strip the coops down when the bedding gets quite thin and I've removed quite a lot because it is clean. Now that you've seen the daily routine in cleaning out the poop from the coops, I'm going to show you a less frequent routine that we do and that's to actually strip down the coops completely. I have filmed this before and if you want to see the long version please go back and watch that video but if you want to see the basic routine and it's speeded up so you can see exactly what I do, watch this video. It's very straightforward. The first thing I do is clean out all the old bedding using a little shovel and a truck. I then scrub it down using warm water with a little bit of washing up liquid and a good old fashioned scrubbing brush. Rinse it all off with a hose. Then I use this biocidal disinfectant and we use one called Smite. Now the reason for doing that is you can get all sorts of creepy crawlies inside your coop. Red mite is one of the worst and if you get that on your chickens, the little things get into the skin of your chickens and they suck the blood and they can lose a lot of condition and can be very, very ill. So the best thing to do is to treat your coops on a regular basis. Now, one way to tell if you already have red mite is just to pop your hand just inside the door. If you have red mite, they will actually drop out onto your hand because they'll detect the warmth and they'll detect the blood. Just keep it there for 30 seconds to a minute and if you've got them, you'll see them on your hand. Clearly, I don't, so let's get started and you can see the routine in quadruple time. There you have it, the coop is completely clean now with brand new fresh bedding and ready to go for Barbie and her two young chicks. And of course there has to be a full inspection. If you're wondering what happens to the soil bedding from our coops, this is where we put it. This is our gooseberry patch. We use it as a mulch here and we also use it as a mulch in our fruit cage. Feces when they first come out of a chicken are very, very acidic, so it's not recommended that you add them directly to your soil. 
If they're mixed with bedding though, it takes rain or sleet or snow to actually drench the root nutrients and take them into the soil. This happens quite slowly and we've found that our raspberries and our gooseberries and blackberries are fantastic using this method. We've now dealt with the poop in the coops, but our chickens aren't discriminating. They also have lots and lots of feces on the grass itself. So we need to be able to deal with those. Once again, I'm using a child's implement, this time a child's gardening rake. And I use this in conjunction with a mini truck. So let's go and I'll show you how I use them. It's very simple, just hook the rake underneath the poop, lift it up and drop it into the truck. When I've collected all of the poultry manure from the chicken enclosure, I bring it back to one of these buckets. It's just an old lidded bucket that came with something else inside and I've drilled some holes in the bottom and made it into a mini composter. Just take the lid off. And empty my collected poultry poo into the bucket. Pop the lid back on. And once I've filled that, I'll keep this slidded bucket for two complete years. In that time, it'll break down and form a wonderful nutrient-rich fertilizer for the vegetables or the fruit or even the flower beds. It's so much better than having to buy fertilizer at the garden center. We hope you found that useful. This is part two in our series of videos. So stay tuned for part three coming up soon. If you did like this video, please take a moment to give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions, leave me a comment or if there's anything else you'd like me to film for this series, again, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to make that happen. If you would subscribe and hit the notifications icon, you'll get to know of any new videos as soon as they're available. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.